Hi there, on this episode, I'm gonna be sharing about the stain that's on Jesus' robe that I put there. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this episode. Do you already think you know what heaven and hell are all about? Is there nothing more to know and nothing new to learn? Let Lori Ditto open your eyes to the unseen world as she shares from the heart what she has learned when God took her to both places. She reveals all the wondrous workings of a glorious heaven and all the unspeakable horrors of a hell to be avoided at all costs. What you will see and hear is beyond your imagination. Join Lori Ditto and make today count. Hi there, I'm Lori Ditto. Welcome to Make Today Count. I really like that this show is reminding me that every day is counting. And hopefully all these visions that I'm telling of heaven and hell are helping you relate to making today count. In this vision today, I'm gonna to take you into a courtroom of Jesus's and then tell you how it was that he ended up with a stain on his garment that came from me. Let's begin with Matthew 6, 14 through 15. It says, we've read this one before, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now, how important is this? I know I've shared before, I went to hell because I would not forgive. So I'm gonna say this is utmost important in my life. And for many people walking around with unforgiveness in your life, this will be utmost important in yours too. So in this vision, I saw um, a courtroom that was about the size of a stadium. That's how many people could fit in it. It was a very, very impressive courtroom. But the most impressive thing inside of the courtroom is God's throne. And I'd like to explain what I've seen because I've seen different courtrooms in heaven. And you know, here on the earth, we have a courtroom for, um, for traffic. We have one for trial, we have a family court, we have a misdemeanor court, right? So in heaven, wherever God is sitting on his throne, there's also there a courtroom. God can judge us there and he can encourage us, equip us there. So there are different ones. So I want you to think of his throne as, the, as like an elevator. You know how an elevator will take you from floor to floor? Well, God can go, it's one throne, he sits on the same throne, but that throne moves from courtroom to courtroom. And so I've been in different courtrooms and this was the first time I was ever in a stadium filled courtroom. In fact, it was the first time and only time. I never wanna be in this courtroom again. So when I popped into this courtroom, um, I was sitting in the stadium, there were only three other people like me in the stadium besides Jesus, he was on his throne. And there were two men and a woman and a woman down in a kind of a semicircle a set of desks or, or, or furniture that was sitting down there. And I pop in to look, I'm going to hear a case. And my angel pops in beside me and my angel is so upset that I am there. He struggled talking English to me. I could only get every other word. I don't know what language he was talking, but I knew he was upset. What are you doing here? And Jesus looked up from the commotion that my angel was making and he saw me there and he leans over and he um, said something to like the security angels that were there and the security angel was by me instantly. And what he said to me was the Lord would prefer to see you in his private chamber. And this security angel just assumed that I was gonna get up and go with him. Now I wanna tell you something, angels obey God immediately. For the angels who did not obey God, they are now in hell. So I frustrate angels. I think that the human race frustrates angels because that is what happens to disobedience. But inside of people, when Adam sinned, God came up with a plan to save mankind. And I was in a bad mood. You know, when we are in a bad mood, we really gotta watch ourselves Because when you are in a bad mood, I think 
that's the, that's my highest level of being stupid is when I'm in a bad mood. And so I don't like to be stupid. I really watch my mood because I think that's what puts me there. So the angel is shocked. My angel is really upset. The Lord did not want me in this courtroom. Too bad. I'm just going to sit here. It was ridiculous. All of a sudden, the courtroom filled. I mean, this stadium filled up with people. And they were there for this man's life. God was going to hear the case of this one man. Suddenly, the stadium is filled with all kinds of people. And these people were there because they had somehow touched this man's life. Now, remember, I told you there are people who come into your life. They come in for a season, for a reason, and for a lifetime. So you have no idea how many people are actually inside of your sphere because you don't remember all the nurses that took care of you or the doctor that was there when you were born. You might not remember all of the uh, kitchen workers when you used to go to elementary school. You might not remember how many people in your life who were there for a season, who were there for a reason. And then, of course, there were people in this man's life who were there for a lifetime. And this man had went to church. And that meant that much of the church, this guy was older and he had been in church for a long time. And so there were lots of people connected to his life. He had went to a large church, and so there were lots of members, their families and things were in this, in this stadium. And so that was really quite impressive. And the first thing that the Lord said when he began to hear the case was, before anything was heard, the Lord said, if you live forgiving others, you may leave now. 75% of the whole place left. And this man had been a leader in his church. I was surprised at how many leaders got to leave. And I was surprised at how many leaders had to stay. So as soon as it was emptied, um, Jesus began to hear the man's case. And what he wanted to talk about was he was demanding justice right now. Do you know there are many people on the earth right now who have a justice chip inside of them? And because of this justice chip and because of the enemy twisting it and turning it and wanting us to demand justice right now, we don't trust God and he is the justice God. He will work things out. But for reasons that I don't understand, this man wanted justice immediately and was demanding it and was forcing God's hand. It's like, well, can he really force God's hand? He was forcing situations on the earth. And so the Lord had to hear this case and Jesus was very, very patient. The whole time he was listening to this man, God was sad. God was very, very sad. Because what he was hearing, the man had not allowed him to help. And so after everything had been said, the Lord judged the case. And everyone that was in that stadium was sentenced to hell. And you would have thought that that knowledge, having been to hell, me having been somebody who's been to hell would have shaken me. But because I was in such a bad mood, I was mad. Do you know when you get mad, you don't care that Jesus is sad. Let me say that again. When we get mad, we don't care that Jesus is sad. Anger is such a powerful emotion. Some people use anger to cover fear, but anger, anger will end in murder. You got to get rid of anger. And so what was happening at that time was 
these people didn't care either, right? That man who was being heard, his, um, what he was asking God to hear, he was mad too. That's why he was demanding it right now. Oh my goodness. And even though everybody disappeared, it did not shake me enough to cause me to realize the reality of what was going on in that room. You know what, we gotta take a break right now, but when we come back, I wanna tell you what Jesus did to me and the stain that I left on his robe. I think this will minister to you greatly. Come back in just a minute. Lori Ditto had 15 remarkable visions where she was taken to heaven and even firsthand experienced hell itself. Now she travels around the world as an evangelist and seer, where she shares straight from the heart the life-changing lessons she learned, backing them up with scripture and biblical truths. Lori has been called to speak and prophetically minister to people in matters of repentance and sin, humility, how unforgiveness can affect our destiny, and how the daily choices we make can either reflect God's heart or lead us away from God. Her desire is to see people escape hell and live out the principles of heaven here on earth. Through her books and additional trainings, conferences, and church meetings, Lori works to equip others to fulfill the Great Commission. Log on to MyFathersReputation.com where you can find out more about her ministry, products, watch her videos, and much more. Hey, welcome back. Oh my goodness, this is so intense. Just before the break, I was explaining about a courtroom where a man was demanding justice before the perfect timing of God. And what it had resulted in was people going to hell. We need to pay attention and leave all judging to Jesus. The Lord has had to correct me in this judging thing in the beginning too many times. Hopefully, I don't do this sin anymore, but if I do, I repent quickly. You know, we judge one another, right? We look at somebody and decide if they remind us of somebody that we don't like. Now suddenly we don't like them. People will come up to me and they say, oh, you remind me of somebody you know, do I know you? And I'm like, no, I just got one of those faces, but I hope I remind you of somebody that you like, because if not, I know they're not gonna like me, right? We do that. We need to stop that, grow up, stop judging people. Let's say we see somebody, why do we think we get to tell everybody what looks good on them? <laughs> I have so many people who come up to me and um, they don't know me. Even my grandchildren do this to me. So it's, there's, I'm not upset about it, but my grandbabies have come to me and they have said, Nana, why do you only wear black and white? You don't look pretty in black and white. Princesses don't wear black, Nana. <laughs> From the time, I, I have six granddaughters and so far five of them have told me this and other people have told me this too. I wear black and white because there was a day in my history when the Lord said to me, if you will live a black and white life, I will anoint you when you speak. Now I'm a very literal person. Jesus knows I'm a very literal person. The event that I was putting on was a black and white event. He said this to me the next day. So I put on black and white the next day. The third day he said it to me again. I was getting ready to wear blue. Blue is my favorite color. Instead, I chose to wear black and white. And I have chosen that every day since. I believe God, I believe the word of God. And if God has spoken things to you, it doesn't matter if anybody else, it doesn't matter that he hasn't said that to, to these other people, he said it to you. You hang on to what God has told you. And I don't know if I'm anointed when I speak or not, but I believe it and I want it. Do you want the things that God has told you? Then hang on to it and do everything within your realm to make sure that that happens. That was just a freebie. Let me get back to the vision about the courtroom. 
So the Lord had heard the case and now they were starting the second case. My angel still can't speak clearly. He is so upset and, and he rarely says much, but right now he is saying a whole lot of words that I can't understand because he's so upset. The Lord leans over to this security angel. The angel is by my side immediately and says, the Lord would like to see you in his private chamber. And I just kind of was still mad, you know, and the angel said, and he said, please. And you could see the angel struggled having to tell me that God said, please. And, and he should have, the angel should have had to struggle that God had to say, please to me for a bad attitude. It was terrible that God, the God that I shared before says, thank you would have to say, please. And I thought, well, okay. And at least my angel started to calm down and the security angel grabbed me. He was not happy with me. And I went to go to the private chambers of Jesus and he was already there. You know, I always thought that Jesus was slow because there's a scripture that says, you know, that he's slow because he doesn't want any to perish. But I want to tell you, he is fast like lightning. He was already there in the room. And when I walked in, he was standing behind his desk and he was looking at me, shaking his head. If I had had any sense about me, I would have been worried. But I just looked at him. You know, sometimes we take God for granted. Sometimes you become so familiar with God that you act like he's your best friend and you forget that he is the Lord God Almighty. And that's where I was. So dangerous. Never forget that he is the Lord God Almighty. God should not have to say to me, Lori, I am God. It was just amazing. He said to me, I never want to see you in that courtroom again. And I was upset. I told him, I, I wanted to see how those cases turned out. And he said, if your life had been tied to their lives, you would have been sentenced also. Well, that's a reality check. Do you know how many lives your life is touching? And I could have went to hell for unforgiveness because of demanding justice. And all those people in that room were demanding justice. It's not that the justice chip inside of you is wrong. It's that you're allowing Satan to manipulate it. And what I said to him was, you said you would defend me. He already knew it was in there, but so much emotion came out. You said you would defend me. Let me tell you what had happened years ago in a far away land. When I was learning about God, I was a mess. I needed a lot of deliverance. I needed a lot of patience. And in my process of trying to get better, somebody called me a Jezebel. Don't do that. Don't call people names like that. Do you know that the scriptures say, how dare you tolerate that woman? Jesus doesn't tolerate Jezebel. And for anybody to call somebody such a name, you're putting a death, a spiritual death sentence on that person. And so I got, I, I went, I got a pastor, I got, I got help. You know, it says go to them. If they won't listen to you, meet with people. I like Matthew 18, but in this room, things didn't be seen to go my way. It just so happened. I had a little bit of dirt on one of the leaders. So I went into the bathroom. I looked in the mirror and God did what he does. He catches my eye and then he's, I'm paying attention to him. He said to me, I can defend you or you can defend yourself. Which one would you like? Oh God, you go ahead and you defend me. You defend me, God. He said, you're going to have to give me that tidbit of whatever that dirt is that you have on that other leader. God doesn't play the game that way. God doesn't slander. God doesn't expose. And I thought, okay, fine. You can have it. You're going to defend me. 
So that's all I knew. God is going to defend me. And to this day, do you know that I still don't know? I can't recall any of that. I really did give it to him and he separated it from my mind. Thank you, Jesus. I walked back out and things did not go well. I'm thinking, Jesus is going to zap you guys. I am his favorite. You don't get to talk to me like that. You don't get to call me such bad names. And nothing happened. And then I thought, well, yeah, it can't happen because I'm in this. I'm in this room. I have to leave this building so that God can send fire or lightning or whatever he's going to send. He's really going to get these people. But you know what? God doesn't act like that either. <laughs> and so nothing happened and nothing happened and nothing happened and nothing happened. And so what did happen was I end up in heaven in a courtroom because I'm mad that God has not defended me. And he stood there so steady, looking at me. How long is he going to have to put up with his unbelieving people? How long is he going to have to put up with his unbelieving favorite daughter of his? I need to be trained. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you the rest of this. See you soon. Living in the reality of eternity changes everything. God gave Lori Ditto an insider's view through 15 unforgettable visions that are beyond imagination. And what she shares with vivid imagery will surprise you as you break through into new levels of understanding about how heaven really works. Talking about heaven really does bring heaven right into the midst of what it is that you're surrounded with. In Encountering Heaven, Lori describes her tangible encounters with heaven that will draw you deeper into the heart of God so that you too can be set free from the unforgiveness that blocks you from heaven. Function in your heavenly identity, energize you to powerfully share the Great Commission, fulfill your God-given purpose, believe for the impossible, and much more. Log on to Lori's webpage, MyFathersReputation.com, and get your copy of Encountering Heaven today. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, this has been intense for me, telling you about heaven, been to heaven, and now we're to the part where I can explain about this stain. So I have just said to God, you did not defend me. And he just looked at me with these eyes. And then when he spoke, he was very patient, very clear. He's a good father. This is what he said. He said, I didn't do what you wanted me to do. And it hit me. And I just started bawling. How many times? How many times has that happened, right? I've prayed for the sick, somebody that I love so much and they died. How many times have I come up with this plan? Oh God, if you just do it this way and he doesn't, but you're God, you could have done it. And he answered me, I am God. And when God talks to you like that, that correction, Grab a hold of it, hug it, embrace it, because God corrects those who he loves and he loves me. And I just wept bitter tears. God, it hurt me so much. It hurt me so much when they said these things about me. It hurt me because he came around the desk and he did something very unique. He took his, he took the, the sleeve on his robe and he pulled it down and he cupped it. And he began wiping my face. I had makeup on, tear stains, and this stain went up his arm. It like it absorbed. <gasps> now I was very worried. My pain was on his robe. And now I was super sad. Now I was, now I was very concerned. Oh God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not important anymore. That's what I kept saying. I'm sorry, God. And didn't our father, didn't Jesus cry out to our father when he said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. I finally touched that. It's okay, Jesus. You're so beautiful. You're so perfect. You know what? I don't want my pain on your robe. And he said, I'll never forget, Lori. You don't have to worry. 
I won't forget the pain that your life has been in. I won't forget. And this stain is going to stay right here until they ask for forgiveness. And you know what? I'm going to send you out and I'm going to ask you to say hard things to people. I'm going to ask you to explain complicated things with these visions and they're not going to believe you and they're going to hurt you. And when they hurt you, I'm going to wear your pain right here. And this is what you need to know. You can trust Jesus with your pain. You don't have to use your own justice chip. You just need to know that God is no stranger to your pain and he's going to hold on to it for you. You know what? I just want to pray for you. I want to pray for all the ones who are hurting right now because somebody hurt you. Somebody called you a bad name. Something, something is not right. You need to cry out to Jesus. Okay. And when things are really intense and I can feel, I can feel right now the pain, I can feel it. And when I cry out to Jesus, I like to get down on my knees. Let's just pray. Lord, right now I call out for this pain. You got no right to tie up God's people. You let go of God's people, pain, suffering. Satan is doing that. I bless God's people right now. I bless you. I bless you. God will take away your pain. You fit. You belong with him. God wants you free. I bless you right now. Don't seek your own justice. Don't do that. Trust your Savior. He doesn't do it like we think. He didn't do it like I think. He's not going to do it like you think. But he's good. And he will do it the way that it needs to be done. He will. You can count on him. Oh, God. Oh, God, your people, they're so hurt. Right now, God, your people are so hurt. They need your help. God, they need your help. Take this pain off of your people, God. Let them see what, what you see about them. And for the ones that need immediate correction, God, come to them and let them hear your voice. I am God. There is, there is so much healing. T take just a huge step backwards when we hear, I am God. And that makes sure I know I am not. I am not God. I am not God. None of this, none of this would work my way. None of this. I want to trust your plan because you're God. You've been so good to me. You've been so good to my friends. Right now, I pray for the people. Pray for the people. You're not God. We all need your help, Jesus.